use your time for good for the presentation of enriching the data versus filtering the data in Apache Spark. I'm Gokul Prabhagaran, Engineering Manager in Carl Loyalty Organization Capital. So before we really dive into the today's topic of our interest, enriching such as filtering, I would like to give some details about Capital One. To Capital One is the first US bank to exit out of legacy on-premise data centers to go all in cloud. You can imagine what kind of a tech transformation a, a, a public company would have gone through to really achieve such a feat. So that is why we are a tech company currently, which happened to be in a banking business. We have invested heavily into our tech capabilities and we pretty much operate now as a tech company. And these are all things is possible mainly because we are a founder-led company till date, staying true to its mission of change banking for good. How we really stay focused to that mission? There are many ways we do. One of that is we give back to our community and in that also we do multiple things. This being a tech conference and also we are a tech focused organization. I would like to start off with we not only operate as an open source first company, we also contribute really into open source projects as well as from our implementations within our enterprise organization for our financial services company. There are many things we do in the regulated industry which can benefit others. So we also give back a lot of those things as open source projects and there are many things we formed as open source project which came from our organization and I have called out few which is like critical stack, Rubicon, data profiler, data copy, cloud custodian. They all play in varied spaces like DevOps, Kubernetes, data, ML, data cleansing and a lot of things. So that's open source for you guys. The next one is Coders. Coders is a program we run in middle schools across the United States where our associates work with middle school students and provide them opportunities to envision a tech career in their future and also get really hands-on experience for them while they are in middle school itself. The next one is Coda. This is the program which pays way for non-tech folks to get into tech stream and tech as their career and we provide and empower them with the opportunities for them to be really successful with tech. So first we will start off in our agenda first we are going to really see the loyalty use case in capital. When we really get into the details you will understand why this is what is our starting point right because this it's where this whole uh, design pattern evolved and that design pattern first starts with filtering the data approach in Apache Spark. And there were some challenges we faced with that approach and that is what led us to a different approach which we tried out and now uh, we are sharing this for uh, all our uh, folks which is enriching the data approach and how those challenges were fixed using enriching the data approach. First, we will start off with the theory on what this really means using our use case. And then we will go through a data based approach for the same, which enables us to compare two different approaches and why we pivoted towards one over the other. And we believe that that probably something which will help a lot of Finally, we will conclude and leave some time for the Q&A. So first, we are going to start off with the loyalty use case in Capital One. So loyalty use case, right? If you have used any of Capital One product, Capital One being a pioneer in credit card, and this platform is the one which pretty much any of our credit card products, be it VentureX or Venture focusing on travel or Saver, Saver one, dining and entertainment, all those transactions gets processed through this platform. And this is the platform 
which is one of the core credit card rewards based out of Spark. I have abstracted the details for Bruity, but if you see, we, 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 we receive all those credit card transactions and we process them, we're reading them, and then we apply a lot of account specific eligibility rules, and then transaction specific eligibility rules. Finally, we compute earn, and then we purchase them in the database. So you can imagine like account specific uh, business rules, probably maybe to the simplest term, like, hey, this account is really a, a valid account to get rewards at this point in time. And the same goes for transaction too, right? There are various things we do, but this is the simplest one where a transaction is this a really eligible transaction to earn rewards. So those are business rules we apply and then we compute the earn and that's what gets persisted in the data store. The reason now you can imagine, right? Why, why, why we are starting off with this, right? This is the platform which is built on top of Apache Spark which processes millions of transactions. And this is our brewing ground for comparing these two design patterns in Apache Spark, right? So let's start. So first we are going to start off with filtering the data approach. So you just keep the previous uh, picture in your mind and we are going to stretch that same example into uh, a little bit deeper on using filtering the data approach lens. Right, the same use case right now what what we are really doing with filtering the data approach in this we are receiving some transactions when we are applying some account specific business rules then transaction specific business rules how are we doing this right the key thing to remember when it comes to filtering the data approaches it is done using sparks inner join and spark being one of the big data framework specialized using in memory. So filtering the data approach is also do the same, right? Which is inner join using. So with that context, let's see this. So even though we do operate with millions of transactions, just for, for establishing the fact, like let's take 10 transactions is what we are dealing with in this example. So when we are reading those transactions and then we are applying some account specific business rules using Spark's inner join, what happens naturally is there, it, it is actually going to filter out the ones which is not matching, right? So transactions which are not matching in this example, phi are gone. So phi goes to the next stage and same we are doing with the transaction specific business rules where we are applying Spark's inner join in memory, which filters out three of the transaction which is not matching so then finally only two are making it reverse computation and let's assume two are really eligible transactions and we are computing earn for those so the, the key takeaway from this is we are using sparks inner join in memory at each stage of data pipeline what happens is the non-matching ones naturally getting filtered out at each stage and only the ones which are eligible or which are matching is what really making it to the end. So if you see this, right? So there, there, the, now filtering data approach may imagine, hey, this sounds like really what Spark does, right? Let's let's stretch this same example. We establish the fact using data. The same now we are having just. We have three transactions and we are trying to really do spark inner join to find the matching ones out of this. So what are, what are the things which are matching? So we naturally are getting only two transactions which are matching when we are trying to apply the account status of good, which is, which indirectly means that there are, there are, there are good accounts, right? So the same, if we do with the transaction eligibility, assume that it's the category is what we are trying to see, which is why like we don't want to deal with any other payment. So in that case, we are trying to filter out the payment and we are, we are only processing the accounts which have made the purchase. So that is leaving us with one transaction in this example. So that is what goes to our earned competition and then we really uh, 
give them all the rewards, whatever they are entitled to. So, if you see this flow, it's the same spark energy in memory, which loses one in this case. So, what's the problem with this approach? When we put this in production, there have been some challenges we really faced. First thing is, after having the application deployed to production, it was really hard to debug this. So the main thing is, hey, what has happened to those transaction which got filtered in memory because it's something which happens at that moment and everything is dealt in memory for the fastness of apache frame uh, spark framework but if we have to really backtrace all those transactions which has happened in memory that's where the real challenge starts and being in a regulatory industry right, we really need to know mainly what has happened to the transactions which we really did not provide on or we should be in a position for anyone for that matter right you should be in a position to know that what has happened to each one of your records right which if something is getting filtered out in memory in some use cases it probably fits in in our use case it did not people who are familiar with apology spark probably may argue that hey you can do counts at each stage yes that's possible but there are two issues with that approach too, which is a costly operation in Apache Spark. Data pipelines probably can live with doing counts, but if, you, if your processing is huge enough, then you probably may not be afford to do counts at each stage when you're dealing with millions and billions of rows. And the second problem with the count approach is you will again get to know how many records really got filtered out or made it to the next stage you will never get to know why unless you really know the context so that these are all the challenges we faced with the filtering the data approach how did we really overcome this problem right that's where we pivoted after doing some research we pivoted towards our next pro design pattern which is enriching the data approach the same example if you see here the same example of dealing with 10 transaction the key difference is instead of sparks inner join we are going to use sparks left outer join in this case the main thing is we are not really filtering out any data at any stage so in previous case you started off with 10 you filter out the information so which means that your number of rows decreases but in this case we are not filtering out we are really enriching the data with all the contextual information from your left data set keep enhancing your right data set so that you have all the information so the rows are not changing instead your columns are growing so the same example 10 transactions we are applying five account specific rules nothing changes but we have really picked up some columns which are required for us to determine later so 10 rows again making it to the transaction stage we are applying transaction rules the same 10 transaction stays we picked up some transaction specific business rules now we apply all the business logic then we are actually arriving at the same result good accounts which may trans purchase right it's two transactions then that's what really is pushed to the next stage and they are getting whatever they are entitled to so the key difference in this is the rows are not changing because we are enriching the columns using left outer join let's drive home the fact using a data example for enriching as well similar to what we did with the filtering we are going to see the same example so here the same accounts and transactions the left outer join number of rows are not changing instead we really enriched the data set with the status which is what we need to make a determination whether that was a, a, a good account right same we are doing with the transaction left outer join so our column got increased where we picked up the category into our data set now we have same three transactions with few more columns and what we are doing is we are using this information and trying to apply some business logic 
then we can enhance with some more columns as well to make really your computation more easier so what they're doing is hey is this really eligible for the next stage so just have them as true then you can go and pick whatever the, that particular column is true for your next stage of processing so in this that's the only one which has good account and also they have made the purchase right so that's what is really we are getting the same result similar to our previous example too what's the advantage of enriching over the filtering so if you compare the problems we faced with the filtering with enriching here the, da the data is not changing instead we are really enriching the original data state which captures the state information which makes it easy for us to debug and analyze later and also we have the data columns and flags captured at each stage gives us more granular details to debug as well as backtrace hey what has happened to the other two transactions in our example why they did not make it to the next stage this naturally enables us no need of having counts at any stage because we have all the required information for us to really do cool you probably you all got some uh, comparison details between two uh, apache spark based uh, design patterns and uh, you probably may be able to make some informed decisions which one fits your use case right we really made the switch to enriching the data approach in our production after we went live with the first version using filtering in uh, initial days itself and that filtering approach is what really is successfully running in production and processing millions of credit card transaction daily and that's what really provides all our customers with millions of cash card and miles hope you all had some some details about me i'm a capital one engineering manager i have been building software application from its initial version of java as well as apache spark i regularly give presentations based on big data and no sql as well as contribute to capital one tech blogs i have provided my social handles for you guys to thank you for the opportunity what's in your wallet hope you all have great conference thank you